All right, which one of you comedians shrank my new guitar? Now, some of you smart guys are looking at this and thinking something ain't right. And you're not wrong for thinking that because this is not your normal new guitar day purchase. But rather than me explaining it to you, you can see for yourself because I recorded the purchase. And while you watch that, I'm going to set this up to be unboxed. A few videos back, some of you may recall, I purchased a Mitchell bass guitar from well, first it was Musician's Friend, and then the replacement was from Guitar Center. It was a disaster. That purchase was actually a replacement purchase for the bass that I really wanted, which is the one we're going to get now, because it's finally in stock. So we are at glarymusic.com. For those of you that don't know, Glary is a company that makes lots of inexpensive music gear, not just guitars and basses. We're here for a short scale bass guitar and they don't just sell a short scale bass. They sell the shortest scale bass. This one right here. All right, they're showing it in yellow. It's available in yellow, what they're calling burly wood, which is actually just a clear coat. And then there's red. And I'm going to be picking up the red one right now because I've already got mine in my shopping cart. So we're going to head right over there. So now, at this point, or at, rather at some point from here on out, my personal information is going to start popping up. At that point, you guys won't be seeing anything from that on. I'm going to edit that stuff out, or I'm going to blur it, or something. And uh, once that part's done, we'll meet on the other side. All right, so the order's been placed, as you can see, and... Uh, it's going to take about a week, maybe a little more to get here. It says five to seven business days, but it is free shipping. And it looks like they're not even going to be charging me uh, U.S. sales tax. All right. I know you already know what's inside the box, but now we get to answer the question anyway. So what's inside the box? This is not your usual box. Oh, what's going on here? We got a box in a box. All right, looks like you guys got the best seat in the house for this one. Silica gel packs. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. This is starting to look pretty good. Let's see. Hmm. All right, well, we got a kicking little bass guitar here, but before we get into that, let's see what else it came with. All right. Came with a gig bag, but it's just really more more of a raincoat than anything. I'm sorry, Larry, I don't like talking bad about stuff like this, but there's no padding here. This is really just a sleeve to keep it dry and keep it on your back. That's about it. Uh, still good to have, All right? It doesn't hurt. So what do we have in this now? That's the cord strap, which feels very small. A couple of picks, two Allen keys, one for the bridge, one for the, one for the truss rod. Let's take it out of the box. Wow, this is surprisingly small. Now, I'm not upset about it. I was really expecting it to be a little bit bigger than this. Uh, it says it's 25 and a half inch scale length, so I was expecting something that was about the size of a full size guitar.
There's your difference. From nut to nut, it seems to line up. String length seems to be about the same as I had them side by side. All right, one other thing that I want to do with you guys is measure the scale length of this instrument, all right? Uh, it's just such a unique size, I just want to be sure. All right? So the way we do that is we're going to measure from just inside the nut to the 12th fret. Then we take that number and multiply it by two, and that's going to give us the scale length for the neck, right? If you have a, any neck lying around your house that you don't know what the scale length is, this is how you do it. And then there's also measuring from the inside of the nut all the way up to the bridge. This is a little less perfect. I mean, when you measure there and you're looking for 25.5 inches because of all the different saddle lengths, you know, it's, you're going to be off a little bit. But as long as you're right there, you know, right at 25.5, give or take a tiny bit, you know it's right. So first we're going to check the intonation to the 12th fret. I lay, I'm laying this right at the edge of the nut on the inside. So it's just running up against the nut. All right. And that is right on 12 and three quarters inches or 12.75 inches. When we multiply that by two, we get 25.5 inches. So this neck is a 25.5 inch scale neck, and it should right now be on a 25.5 scale length instrument, right? It is, but we're going to just check, right? To check the full length, we do the same thing. I'm going to go right up to the saddle, more or less. And we are right there at 25 and a half inches. So this instrument does in fact have the same scale length as a normal Fender style guitar. All right, so the first thing we got to do with this guy is tune him up. <sighs> so about that whole tuning thing. No sooner had I started setting up to do that with you guys than I realized this guitar was too far gone. Uh, it had never actually been tuned to tension. Hand to God, or yeah, right hand, hand to God. So uh, that being the case, and the fact that the neck had never been under tension, I figured I got to play around with this a little bit. So I did just that. I brought it to tension, I brought it to tune, and then I let it sit and played it on and off and kept it in tune for two days. Yeah, it's two days later. So... Here's where we're at. So far, so good. The neck is great. The holds tuned just fine. And uh, I haven't done anything else with it except uh, play it just a tiny bit and just tweak the tuning so it stayed in tune, so it stayed under tension. That was it. Now it's time for something that's still kind of new around here in the cave. We're going to weigh this base, all right? And we're going to do it with this luggage scale. For those of you that may not know, real quick, the way it works is we use this to wrap it around the headstock, and we, when the weight is applied here, we're holding the handle here, and these two needles move together. The black one stays where it sits, and the red one goes back to zero. Okay, and that tells you, the black one tells you the weight. All right, so it looks like this. All right. So we end up with something like that. Now ours will be more like, like that. <laughs> All right. So as I lift it up by the handle, it's going to move. All right. So there's no question that I'm actually hanging it. Right. 
Sorry, I had to get these, but I didn't touch nothing. And it looks like we are at right around five and a half pounds, which is pretty light. But sounds about sounds appropriate for something this size, right? It makes sense. We're gonna do the tones, and then we will uh, talk about the guitar a little bit. You'll get my opinions and uh, anything I want to mention about the specs and all that. All right. All right. I'm just gonna keep it simple and just go between the different pickups. I'll be using a pick for this, so just know that it's gonna be warmer with fingers. This is both pickups on with the tone all the way up. Now, just the bridge pickup. Now, just the neck pickup. Now, I have a lot of thoughts on this guy, for sure. I'm going to start by talking about going from the headstock down, all right? First things first, the tuners. These tuners don't need to be changed. They work perfectly fine. Uh, are they great? No. This is a $110 instrument, and you can buy tuners that are more than $110. So, <laughs> can they be improved on? Of course. But... They don't need to be changed right out of the box. This is good stuff. Okay, so there's that. Um, as far as the neck goes, the nut is pretty well done. I'm happy with that, I, I believe. And the nut width, the, uh, the neck width of the nut is actually uh, a little narrow for me. I would definitely wouldn't mind a couple more millimeters at the nut. Uh, but it's this is supposed to be geared for kids. So it's going to be a little skinnier here. It's not prohibitively thin for a, an adult, or I should say prohibitively narrow. It's perfectly fine. So you can have as much fun as you want with this thing, trust me, okay? As far as the shape of the neck on the back, it's a bit of a C shape. It's what they call a modern C these days. It uh, comes with a slightly narrow nut like we have here, and it comes, it's rounded. It's not overly big in any way. If anything, it's slightly slimmer than the classic C shape so it's kind of meant to be a fits most kind of situation you know I mean, it's kind of a fits most size so uh, it feels good the neck itself is actually bare okay there's no finish on it for those of you that are thinking that this might actually be a problem it's really not okay because all wood before it's used for building furniture or, or guitars is kiln dried when it comes to guitars it gets kiln dried for longer all right by kiln drying the wood it becomes more stable so if your furniture is stable enough to be built in georgia and then shipped to arizona where it's going to sit in somebody's house for 20 years uh, you should be pretty good in most environments with a bare maple neck okay i'm not saying that this would be perfectly fine in arizona or in a rainforest it over time probably won't be but in most other environments it should be perfectly fine so nothing to worry about okay now as far as the way this guitar came the action is nice and low i like it that way but it does clack a little and buzz a little i may have to raise it slightly so the neck is good okay i like that uh the body is made of good wood i'm not exactly sure what kind of wood it says that it's a mahogany uh, on the website this doesn't look like mahogany to me it looks more like ash but that's just a guess on my part for all i know that this is just this type of mahogany that looks this way okay but whatever wood it is it's good wood that's good the fact that it's stained lightly like this and left more or less bare after that although i'm sure there's some kind of seal around it um it, it, that's good too the thinner the finish the more the wood can vibrate and uh, resonate on its own right 
the bridge, decent bridge, nothing to complain about here. The potentiometers work well. Again, really nothing to complain about here. Everything works. As for who this is for, I think this is for everybody because I'm having just as much fun as any nine-year-old would. <laughs> okay, that's number one. For kids, it's perfect out of the box the way it is. What it comes with, everything is perfectly fine. It would be nice if the gig bag was a little better, but it's not, and it's perfectly fine the way it is. It functions how it's supposed to. It protects the guitar. Just don't ship it in that bag, okay? That's all. But on a rainy day, you're good to go. For someone who's got some experience, though, it's a little different. I think things get a little different. Everything about this guitar is fine. The fretwork, all that. No complaints, nothing that an experienced player would really have to complain about. Although, we do. That's another story. But, the pickups, uh, they work fine, they do the job, no problem. For someone who's just learning, perfect. All right? But, for somebody who's looking to, to add to their collection, who wants a nice sounding instrument, who knows what they like in a nice sounding instrument, they're going to want to change these. And that's fine, that's normal. Okay? So, if you're looking to pick one of these up, and you're asking me, RJ, should I? Yeah, you're not going to waste your money. You're probably going to have a really good time. That's how I'm going to leave it and just tell you, look, I think overall it's a good instrument. So, in my opinion, this is a home run from GlabbyMusic.com. I'm going to put a link in the description. Uh, don't worry, I don't make anything off it. This is all for you guys, okay? And... Uh, so you click that link, go buy yourself one, and uh, until next one, you've been awesome. I've been RJ. Take care.